Hi, this is Brendan Ward from the Australasian Society of Association Executives here in Brisbane. I think it's fantastic that the association sector now has its own television program, and so I encourage you to sit back, relax, and enjoy Six Degrees of Association with Sarah, Rob, and Andrew. Hello yet again and welcome to another episode of Six Degrees of Association, the only online TV show that's dedicated to association success. My name is Sarah Gonzalez, I'm from Redback Conferencing and I'm joined by two lovely gentlemen today. First of all, I'm going to introduce you first for a change, oh, Andrew you. McCullough thank from you. Fitness Australia. I was about to say something, but thank Mixed you. It up a bit. Good yeah. to be here, thank you Sarah. And second, but definitely not... Right. Alphabetical. <laughs> Rob Barnes from Afterpie Australia. How are you Thanks, today? Thanks, Sarah. Great to see you again. Here we are again. Again. How long has it been? How many times? <coughs> too many. Who's counting? Too many. And some, in, for some of our viewers, it's been too many. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And for yes. some of our viewers, they're probably going to know what's coming up next, and that is thumbs up, thumbs down. So let's start on the positive, as we always do. Over to you, Rob. Thumbs up. What's Thumb your thumbs up this oh, week? Back to Rob Art first, are we? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. God. God. This is how, it's you know, always to the right. You know. um, oh, uh, I want to give a thumbs up. Oh. Uh, I want to give a thumbs up this episode to AUSAE, the Australasian yes. Society of Association mm. Executives, yes, for a couple reasons. One, um, since uh, the new CEO, Brendan Ward, came mm -hmm. on board some time ago now, they've really started doing some great work, sharing information. I, I feel like uh, for the first time in a really long time anyway, there's a real focus on creating a profession around working mm -hmm. in associations. So, um, AUSAE, and also because They've given us an opportunity to do 60A live at the ACE conference coming up what? in a week right, so. time. So, um, wow. But as a look, it's important for all professions to have uh, an association that represents them. And as an association executive ourselves, mm. um, I think it's great that AUSAE is stepping up to the plate. So yeah, thumbs up to them. Sure. And look for Brendan perhaps to do a uh, episode introduction in, oh, the, look, in you know, the coming episode. Yes. We've got seats. We've got seats. We've, so yeah, I'm, sure. I'm all over that, all over that. Um, I hate to go to the negative, but you know, mm. uh, thumbs down. So thumbs down is to the comment that you often hear from volunteer leaders, which is, I'm just a volunteer. Mm. I'm not sure how many times that I've experienced um, mm. you know, people being held to account or, and the comment comes back, I'm just a volunteer. Look, at the end of the day, volunteer leadership is, um, you know, will succeed you know, based on the same qualities that help people succeed in every other pursuit in life. And you know, we want volunteers that are committed to our purpose. We want volunteers that are prepared to take some level of risk. You know, we want volunteers that are open to new viewpoints. Uh, as my friend Jeff Takanya talks about, we want volunteers who are also comfortable with governing for the loss of control. And this is what it's gonna to take to succeed in 21st century associations. And so people who put their hand up, either because they're just looking for a title or something like that, that's not the kind of volunteer leadership that we need in associations these days. So thumbs down, guys. We, we need you to step up. Mm, definitely agree with that one. Mm, great now, opinion. your thumbs up, I'm really excited about because I love these guys. Do so, yeah. I can go. see that. <laughs> I'll give a thumbs up to uh, Get Up Australia. Uh, we're a few months away from a federal election here in Australia, potentially a few weeks, it seems. Um, so look for Get Up to be a lot more vocal over coming months. I mean, Get Up are a social advocacy group. Um, you know, they, they look for issues and they advocate very strongly towards them. Think, you know, same-sex marriage, think environmental issues, think, think social conscience issues. Mm -hmm. These are what they do. Now, GetUp have such a unique model, and this is what I really do admire about them. They've got over a million members around Australia, but their funding model is such that they'll say, look, membership's free, first and foremost. Anyone can join GetUp. And then they go to their members when there's an issue out there that needs attention. Um, think of those ones I mentioned. And they'll say, this is what we want to do. We want to, maybe it's to support, maybe it's to oppose. This is what we want to do. We want you to help us fund this campaign, either opposing mm. or in favour of. So it's a, it's a really exciting social crowdfunding pro, uh, process that they go through. And um, really, you know, something very, very really modern and really something I think a lot of associations can uh, can look to as a lesson. So just, they're only 11 years old too, and a million mm. members is, it's a I great think speaks model. volumes for the, mm. the profile they've built. Uh, thumbs down, we sort of go from the future to the past, I think, and my thumbs down is a very simple one this week. It's associations that haven't yet mastered the simple art of online renewals and, trend, renewals and uh, registrations or membership purchasing. Um, 
You know, we're in 2016 now, aren't we? I am mm. right at that. But, you know, this, in this last week I found, came across two pretty big associations that still have a very, very rudimentary download our membership form, fill it out, scan, email, probably fax, off these membership forms. And I think, really, I mean, that's, it's so, such a bad way of doing things for two real reasons. One, it's incredibly inefficient for you personally. And secondly, why do you want to put a barrier in front of your members joining or renewing? Mm. You know, you want them to seamless transaction process online as everything is these days. So big thumbs down to those associations. You know who, they, you, know who you are that uh, aren't utilising, aren't joining the 21st century with a simple automated online renewal process. Mm. It'd be good if there was a technological solution for uh, that yeah. kind of thing in the 21st Let's century. Ponder that. I think we, maybe we know yeah. someone. Can't in think area. of anyone off the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now we're going to move through to the next segment and this is our lunchtime special where we actually go and we talk about a topic. And this topic is something, I think it's one of the best topics to talk about. And I know you guys can go on for a very long time. So I'm going to ask you politely to keep it short She's and got sweet. The bell. She's got not the bell. I do have the power of the bell and yeah. I'm not afraid to use it. So, do you need to be passionate about your industry in order to be a successful associations professional within that industry? It's interesting the politeness comes when the camera's on, isn't it, Rob? Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> over to you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. And, and, and it is a fantastic question, you know, passion. And, and, mm. and, you know, and I think, Rob, you sort of feel, you know, is passion a bit overused? And I mean, what does passion mean? But, you know, I mean, there are, you know, the association sector is so vast. You've got so many different industries and so many different people working in those industries. But, you know, does passion, is passion measurable? And do you need to be passionate about an industry? I don't know, but I, I, I do think so. You have to be very informed. You have to have a deep understanding of the industry you represent. And I think that's probably, to me, overrides that passion. Um, you know, does a bank manager need to be passionate about the financial system to be a successful bank manager? I don't know, but he needs to understand the financial system very, very deeply. I think they, I, I have often felt like the, I am passionate about X has become a little cliche. I mean, I read so many job applications and mm. I'm passionate about you know, this industry. I'm passionate about this kind of work. Um, I, I think it's overuse uh, ha, has come, but I, I like the fact that people are trying to describe. Mm. There's a level of authenticity that is lost in a lot of those discussions, and mm. so while it may be difficult for some people, it might be difficult for me to understand why someone is interested in sewage treatment, and that there is an organisation that mm. is, you know, is a, but the impact of that work is very meaningful, and I can easily understand how that. You can be passionate about creating clean mm. water solutions for parts of the world that don't have access to clean water. So, you know, again, it's probably about a focus. Mm. Um, do you need to have a deep passion for the function of you know, membership marketing in order to be really successful at it? No, I don't think so. You just need to be productive, efficient, effective, have a strong work ethic. Mm. Does the combination of all of those things mean that you're passionate? Perhaps it is. Um, you know, there's a lot of people talk about, you know, you want to find your passion and pursue your passion. Mm. Well, you know, at the end of the day, there's just a lot of work that needs to get done that you can be really, really good at. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's okay. So I, I don't know whether you need, and certainly I do not feel that you need to hire people who have a deep expertise in a particular industry in order for them to be really good at the job within your mm. association. You mm. know, you don't need to love the fitness industry to work for Fitness Australia. So on that, you know, both of you have association backgrounds. You know, mm. are you passionate about the fitness industry? And Rob, in any of your previous roles, have you been really passionate about the place that you've worked for? Yeah, and it's a good question because, you know, a lot of people come into the association world from that industry mm. and they sort of take a role that represents that industry that they're grounding is. And, and I'm in that camp. So I came from a fitness industry background. I now work for a fitness industry association. So, yeah, you know, I mm. was. And... When I came into the fitness industry, I was passionate about the fitness industry. I still have tremendous passion for the industry itself. Yeah. Does it make me a better uh, mm. associations professional for a fitness industry body? I, I don't know. I'm passionate mm. about the work associate. I'm passionate about the impact associations can have on the world, mm -hmm. and whether that's through employment with an association, which has been my previous life, which is, whether it's through my employment with Aptify now, and the, the whole idea of association mm. success. That to me, that's kind of where. You know, and that's why I like what Ozai are doing in terms of promoting yeah. the profession of association management because I do believe it's a profession and it's one that's not celebrated enough here in Australia. Mm. Um, 
Was I really passionate about the fitness industry? Not necessarily. I was passionate about the fitness industry association and making that a really, you know, was I passionate about Australian canoeing when I was the CEO there? Yeah. No, I'm, could I paddle a canoe? I can then stay upright in a canoe. But I was passionate about helping people follow their dreams towards the Olympic Games. So it's you a know, bigger so picture and what they stand for. For me, a little bit yeah. more bigger picture. Uh, and again, you know, I reiterate that I can certainly understand how someone who's a biochemist can be really passionate about working with an association to achieve clean water solutions, no matter their title, no matter their mm. sort of role or whatever it might be. And so I think in the 21st century, it's about its cause, its, its impact, it's those sorts of things, as opposed to the industry or even the profession for that mm. matter. Mm. Agree? Yeah, I do. And, you know, and, and go back to my point, yeah, you know, does working in the Fitness Industry Association, am I more effective because I'm passionate? I don't know, but I think I'm more effective because I have a good understanding of the mm. industry. Uh, and I think that, you know, having that deep understanding is what really drives it. But you make a great point, yeah. I'm passionate about the association sector as well, and I think that sort of helps me, and certainly in that role, regardless of what the uh, mm. specific association is. You know what's really important these days is <clears throat> the notion, well, the, perhaps the previous notion that um, the best people in an industry or a profession would never choose to work for the association. Mm. That you get, okay. you know, that you would get the also runs, and and I and I heard. Uh, uh, a CEO, a really successful CEO, a guy called Mark Rantel, speak, and, and, and his comment was, you know, pig's bum, we can't get the best people mm. to, to work on, on the, the meaningful work. And, and I totally agree. I think mm. that we undersell ourselves as associations when we're recruiting. To think that we can't attract the best people in that sector to do the work of the association for the good in the entire sector um, is just not true. And, and perhaps when we go into recruitment, it's not just about looking for people who are necessarily passionate about the whole sector, but it's mm. we want to make an impact in this area, this particular cause, you know, whatever get up is like mm. focused on. Mm, Let's get sure. the best people into that place. Associations are really uniquely positioned to attract that kind of mm. attention. I just don't think we leverage it very, very well. Yeah. Yeah. No, great point. And, you know, I mean, we mentioned uh, our good friends at AUSAE, you know, a passion, obviously, for the association sector yeah. is obviously driving a lot of their good outcomes that they're achieving at the moment. So mm. When we talked about branding, yeah, yeah, we talked about branding not that long ago, for instance, you know, we talk about you know, Institute of Architects. Mm. Well, you, of course, the Institute of Architects could really leverage someone who has a deep passion for architecture as a way of presenting what the impact of a, the Institute of Architects can have on what the world. Can do for their and so there's no question that at that point, being passionate about your industry can add value. Mm. Um, uh, I just think that, well, I've certainly, um, you know, just saying that you've got passion for the industry doesn't mean you're going to get the job. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's a very interesting point. It's, you know, there's a few of those words, passion and engagement, and those words just come about. And I think it's probably a better question to ask, you know, what do you not have a passion for? Because I think everyone seems to have a passion for everything they dip their toe in these days, and it just gets a little bit just watered down, don't you think? Yeah, look, there's parts of, there's parts of running an association. You're trying to hire great people yes. to perform certain functions that are going to deliver great value to the work that you're doing. And uh, I certainly believe that you can hire a membership manager at the Institute of Architects that's been their membership manager at the Institute of Actuaries and they'll be very, very successful because of their functional expertise yeah. and their passion for creating engagement. Yeah, membership. Yeah. yeah, essentially. Um, and so the industry itself in that respect, it's neither here nor there. Mm. Um, you know, they will get deep domain expertise because they're passionate about it and they're going to research it and they're going to put their best foot, foot forward. Um, at the same time, when an association says its core purpose is to significantly move the needle on an issue, you're going to need someone that's passionate about that issue to, yeah. to, to lead that conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll shout out to uh, our former CEO, Loretta Stace at Fitness mm. Australia, when she was there. I mean, she led that conversation about what the fitness industry's impact was on the Australian population yeah. passionately for a decade. Mm. And we followed her over any hill she wanted to walk over yeah. because she demonstrated that. So, um, but that's not enough. Yeah. You know, in a lot of places that's simply not enough. Or, as I say, if you've got a functional expertise that you're passionate about, then that's just as much value to an association. Mm. Yeah. Probably almost, it's almost just a point on that. It's, it's almost uh, perhaps it'd be represented as the maturing of the, ind of the association industry. So that, yep. yeah, you know, I can be a membership manager at one association, then another, then another. The skills I develop in that mm. association membership space are transferable among others. And I don't necessarily need to be 
and have an engineering background to be successful in the Engineers Australia. Mm. I don't necessarily need to have a uh, you know, financial planning background to be successful for Financial Planners Australia. I need to have a solid understanding of the fundamentals of associations, what makes yeah. them work and successful. Um, having an understanding of the industry absolutely is yeah. something that's fundamental as well. How many times have you experienced it or have you seen it in sport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you're a great player doesn't make you a great coach or manager or CEO and yet yeah. in that no, industry particularly it's, it's I was going to say rampant, but that's probably a little negative connotation. But that pathway between elite player, athlete or whatever into the management of the association mm. side of things, I mean, happens doesn't all the time. And, and, and it, do, it doesn't always work. So, yeah, you can be passionate about yeah. coaching a team yep. or a sport and be a dismal failure when it comes to d delivering value for that yeah. in that role. Yeah. But you'll get a job in the commentary booth anyway. So <laughs> there's, yeah. always another, there's always another option. So right. Passion versus education, I guess. Um, something that you can all continue online yeah. as yeah. hashtag 60A. We would love to hear your thoughts. And yeah. like I said, we could do a whole 22 minutes on that. Absolutely. But we're not going to, so okay. let's move on. Um, okay, now we get to the time, which is uh, one of our favourite times. Isn't it, Rob? We love these uh, days. It's a classic. Yeah. It really is gold every time. I love it. So it's certainly the, mine. For those of you new to 60A, um, today is and we hand over to Andrew to talk about the fact that there is an association for everything. And this week, drum roll please. This week, the International Sewing Machine Collectors Association. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's not an association for everything, there must be out there, I'm sure. I just haven't found it yet. But the International Sewing Machine Society, I should say, sorry, my apologies to your members, I know you're watching. The ISMACS is actually a global body. It's a global association we're talking about here. Chapters in North America, Australasia, and the third being pretty much everything else, Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, just an annual fee of $50. Uh, I presume that, that could be Australian, could be US dollars. You receive a quarterly magazine. You get a starter kit. You get access to the world's largest archive of historical sewing machine related material. And you also get an opportunity to attend the annual convention. I'm not sure where that is this year, but stay tuned, I'll find out. Uh, what is interesting is that the website actually mentions, that this is true, the ISM ACS as the premier sewing machine collectors group. So that, that, uh, that makes me ask, is there another one out there that's not mm. quite as good? Is there, is, are there competing sewing machine collectors societies around wow. the world? Please tell us if that's the case. Um, but good on the ISMACS, uh, proving the point that, again, there is an association for everything and very pleased to highlight their excellent work in this segment. God, that would be an expensive hobby. Tell me about the starter kit. <laughs> I want to know what you get. Do you really want to know? I, absolutely. Someone out there, if you have received a starter kit from ISMACS, ISMACS. I, want to, I want to know what's in the starter kit. That's gold. Yeah, gold. Um, Great stuff. I'd love oh. to know what they do at their conference too. Yeah. Can you just keep talking for a sec? Oh, because, yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the bell. It's the bell. Oh, good timing. Look at that. So, two-minute warning. Thank you so much. Um, great cover story there. Thank you. Very, very Thank you. Gl glad to be able to uh, profile them. Yeah. So, this is a time where we actually share your feedback, thoughts and comments from the previous episode. Um, so, we're going to just touch on this first of all. Um, outsourcing was what we spoke about yeah. in the lunchtime special last yeah. time. Um, and we did get some um, one comment here, you know, we find within our organisation it works for creative tasks that we have. So, they outsource their tasks. And I know okay. you've got like your Airtasker and your mm. Fiverr, those sort of sites that you can easily get stuff for, done for or admin a data entry. That's, that's a challenge because you were kind of saying the creative yeah. process needs to be close to home. I think the creative process so. has to be internal. Well, mm. that's just my view, but someone's getting some success out of that. Maybe we need another panellist to start debating with you. I really like uh, that concept of association starting to leverage um, Fiverr.com, Elance.com, mm. Guru.com, these places where you can get yep. short, simple stuff, tasks done mm. really, really quickly and very, very cost effectively yeah. these days. That's, mm. that's it's, nimble it's and agile. lean. Nimble, yeah. lean, lean, agile, good it's point. Thinking, thinking along the same lines. Yeah, there, absolutely. Uh, we also had a question from David. Um, Dave, we don't actually know where David is from, but hi, David, if you're out there. Hello, David. Um, yes. Looking into conferences and these big events that we go to, he finds that there's always so much to do, so little time. How do you max maximise your time at a conference? 
Once again, one minute, guys. Oh, uh, massive, <laughs> massive conference attendee. I love, love myself love a conference. Love a good conference. Uh, I always go with three things. Absolute focus on three things. Mm -hmm. you, you can't do everything. So I, you know, I've got a particular stream of thought, consciousness, or something, a challenge, yep. and I'm targeting. I'm looking at the conference list of attendees. I'm saying I would need to meet that person. I want yep. to meet that person. I need to attend that session, mm -hmm. and stay focused on that. As soon as I've ticked those sort of three boxes off, then I'm free in my head anyway to roam around and 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 partake of everything else. But I always plan ahead three things that I have to take Partaking away. Partaking some few glass wine. There's beverages, there's socialisation, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that goes on the water, around the water cooler at a conference yeah. that you can take advantage of. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a bit the same, but you know, it's preparation. It's really having a clear understanding, you know, spend a bit of time, make mm. that time, set that time aside in it well in advance of when you're actually turning up there. So you know, yes, I want to speak to these vendors, I want to speak to these colleagues, yeah. and these are the sessions I want to attend, and this is what I hope yes. to be able to get out of them. And, uh, and then don't be the person who takes notes and throws them away and never sees them again either. Yeah. Actually, you know, <laughs> We've all been really there. rely on getting something out of those uh, events. And, and, you know, it is a big time investment, mm. conferences. It's getting Massive. there, it's attending, and it's making sure you... Have someone hold you accountable prepare. for them too. Publish yeah. it. Mm. Tweet. This tell is you, what my three goals team, are. This yeah. is where I'm going. This is what I want you to hold yeah. me accountable to when I get Absolutely. back. Absolutely. Yeah, 100%. Well, that brings us to the end. Thank you, guys. Um, next time... This is exciting. This is an announcement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next time, we will be presenting, the three of us, we will be presenting in a fortnight, but it's going to be a different desk. It's going to be a live location. We're going to have a live physical show. audience. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. We're presenting live from Aussie ACE Conference 2016. So our session is actually on Wednesday the 25th of May at 1.45. So take a look at your program. Make sure you're there to watch us. We're going to have music. We're going to have lollies, coffee cups, T-shirts. I'm not promising too much, but it's going to be pretty cool. Rob and my, our trailers will be transported to the... Uh, of course. Really well. We're not going to yeah, be slumming it, are we? This is so exciting. Uh, uh, Shout out again to Ozzy yes, and those guys you. for uh, for having a little bit of courage for us to do something different. It's, yeah. it's a great opportunity for, for us to be there and do the show live for the first time. And Really uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, and have some fantastic. panelists, have some guests. Yeah, so, um, if you're interested, let us know possibly if you want to be part of the show. That's okay too. Well, and, and, and to those of our, uh, our viewers that have been saying we'd love it to go longer, it's going to be going longer. So, for, <laughs> Wait a minute, for the first how time. long? Can I still bring the bell? You can bring the bell. Okay, good. It's going to be a lot. I'm going to make it big. Big bell. Yeah. No. Good, do that. Do that. <laughs> so thank you everyone. Uh, we will see you there. We'll also be streaming as well. So if you can't make it to the conference, you can also catch us online at the regular time of twelve twenty two. But thank you once again. Um, it's Thanks, been Sarah. fantastic. Great Getting again. used to this. It's good. Yeah, yeah. it's not too bad. Good it's worst ways to spend 22 minutes, I guess. Yeah. Um, once again, go online to associationsuccess.org if you would like to share any comments, feedback or thoughts, or go to hashtag 6DA and share as much as you like. And remember that too much agreement always kills a chat. See you, everyone.